Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Market sloshing up and down, up and down. Seems to have the ability to withdraw, you know, up to 60, 80 billion at will. And then it comes back in all at once. It's very interesting how that happens. I've had a couple of people tweet at me. A couple of people ask me in the comments thinking that, it might be, you know, what, what's behind that? How can how can somebody withdraw that much money that quickly, even to sell alts and all of that? Um, it's very interesting. I think it has a lot to do with, um, you know, you have you really don't know what's happening with Tether. Um, it's just very easy right now. I mean, we're in the wild, wild west, and these people have been manipulating markets for forever, and you give them this kind of um, uh, just such easy pickings right now. Uh, that's why, I mean, people want to call, you know, bear market, um, bull market, yada, yada, yada. This is why it's um, dangerous, in my opinion, to get into these cookie cutter mindsets where people just think of, you know, when you hear bear market, you just think of, the, you know, you think of something. It, it gives you an impression. It puts you in a different mindset. I just look at it as, you know, I believe I'm a long term holder. So when I'm holding, I'm either just buying the dips Right, I have my 40% that I play with. People can see my trading strategy if they go back in the day. But basically, I, I store about 60%, play with 40. And, you know, that's that. And sometimes that 40% will become all nest egged. If you, you know, if you, you have to really just go back and look what that means. Um, all my July, um, October, all those videos. And, then I just hold and I work and I research and it's not even that bad of a thing if I do end up having to just hold, right? Because a lot of people are just always chasing the money. It's like, man, I just get into projects that I know are going to be around in five years, or at least that I believe are going to be around in five years. So uh, just very interesting, the mindsets right now. I'm just in accumulation phase, not even really worried about the price. I, I, I buy at certain intervals. I have principles. And I just stick by them. And People are so impatient. They want always have more money to invest. That's why I say a little bit diversified. I always have Bitcoin and, um, you know, some form. I'm actually switching. Um, one of the coins I've picked up, I've been picking, um, you know, I was doing some researching over the weekend, like I said I was. And um, a lot of people are getting into new ICOs. New ICOs are dangerous. Uh, I'm only getting into those if I can find extreme value extreme value if i can't find that i'm willing to take the gamble of buying it post ico at a, at a premium seeing what they do um i don't mind paying a premium at this point i'm not really into taking too many risks um, you know I, I will with with you know with some smaller projects trying to get those you know life-changing money over and over again but those are far and few in between chasing those too many times you know it's like i have the projects that i really think can moon my you know i have a bunch of projects i'm invested in that are under 100 million market cap and that means you know they have the potential to get massive gains um, one that's a little bit up there old school old school people want to forget you know this is where i look you can look to the future you can look to the past bit what is it going to be guys what, girls what's it going to be Definitely not gonna be BitConnect. Bit shares, guys. Bit shares. Um, it it hit me really hard. It's funny. I've invested in this coin since it was five cents, right? Um, I've been talking about bit shares for a long, long time, and it just struck me how important bit shares really is. I don't know why. It's just kind of like I heard a Bitcoin. I don't know. Just it, it just finally sunk in. Bit shares. The ability, so with Tether's BS right now, excuse me, with Tether's BS right now, to have something backed by, to have a BitUSD, to have a, another form of Tether, um, they, they have, they're, they're going to have every currency, you have gold, all of this added Euro, um, this is going to be very, very big, and the fact that it's much different BitShares is much different than Tether because it's backed by BitShares. So it's backed by twice the amount of BitShares, each one of those assets. And what gives BitShares its value is it's a decentralized exchange that you can build on top of. So people can basically, it's almost like 
you can have ICOs on BitShares. You can't because these decentralized exchanges, um, like um, the Bridge, which one is it? Um, SeaBridge. I don't know. There's a, there's a bunch of new, these newer exchanges coming out. What's going to happen is BitShares can outperform all the other exchanges right now. All these ones that keep going down, even Binance can't handle new registrations. Once the regulations become too tough, you're going to start to see the rise of decentralized exchanges and people are going to be looking for bit shares. And I was looking, I read, I, I did, when I do my research, I did as much, I was listening to Stan Larimer, the, the, you know, <laughs> they call him the grandfather of bit shares. Um, you know, Dan's dad, obviously. And they're real gangsters. They're so OG. When you listen to him talk, he's like, you know, I can't get into, I can't get into what Dan's doing because, you know, he has his project. But, you know, we meet up every once in a while and we talk. And, you know, and he was basically saying that he envisions EOS, BitShares jumping onto the EOS platform, which would then just make it the ultimate hub for decentralized exchanges. You would just build your... And that's what's awesome because BitShares is one exchange to rule them all because you open up these... This is the this is a brilliant part. You open up these exchanges, and once you have one BitShares login, you can log into all of these exchanges. So you're going to be able to get all the um, all these coins, all this liquidity. The only problem with BitShares is they they, they really have no marketing. Um, it's very very complicated, but it's built. I'm starting to see the you know Dan Larry Mar has been impressing me for so long. And I don't, I'm not a fucking fanboy. I, I give respect where I see respect. And I think the dude's undervalued, underappreciated. I think BitShares is going to blow up. Um, it's already a billion market cap. So how much could it blow up? Who knows? But I'm very interested in the tech. So I'm, I'm starting to get some more BitShares on this dip. Is what I'm saying. Uh, I look for if Tether was to ever blow up, people to flood into BitUSD, BitCNY. Um, and what happens is the more people want this, the more bit shares is going to be stored away to back it. If bit gold, all of these things, it's um, very interesting. What could happen? Um, let me get into it. What else? So for other 10 X coins, you know, I, I, I have a lot of 10 X coins. So for instance, if we're talking no limit coin, if I wanted to sell, so people say, you know, you had a large supply, you have a large supply of no limit coin. What do you plan on doing? And that's the thing. That's, that's what gives me my my superpower is just holding right that's like a lot of people think my strategy is not that great but that's fine because it works for me because i make my weaknesses my strengths a lot of people want to see a flaw and they think that man you know i got to get rid of this but my ability to you know if i'm not if i'm doing what you perceive as wrong meaning not not tr buying you know not trading trying to ride every single frequency trying to squeeze out every little gain i wouldn't be able to hold for the insane gains because i know so many people who missed out on vibe because they sold when it, it, it boosted up thinking oh well you know i'm gonna buy it on next on the dip and then you know dip didn't happen now they're in a realm where you know they're gonna be spending so much money to get back into the game that it's just a mindset fuck so a lot of people, that's the thing. Weaknesses, it's kind of like a table. And the leg is like the weakness, right? Holding up the strengths. Uh, people don't understand that there's nothing perfect. And to get a great strength, you're going to have to have some weaknesses. Okay? If if you're a great singer, um, you know, you, I don't know. I guess that's a bad analogy. But just thinking of if you're going to be a very, very fast runner, you're probably not going to be able to bench press the most in the world either because you can't have that much muscle and be that fast, right? You're going to be a little bit thinner. That's a, uh, just trying to paint an analogy. It's like what people think perceive, what you perceive as a weakness can actually make your greatest strength stronger. So that's what I'm getting into. Like, just do you in this trading game. Don't just chase everything. My ability to hold is what got me here. And a lot of people would sell a lot of their coin. Like if I thought no limit coin, I, I had get the most, you know, cause I'm up infinite percent on no limit coin. If I was to think that I couldn't get any more out of it, then I would have sold by now. Right. I could have easily been milking this whole time and be out and be done. But I think that with the market cap so low right now, especially with the market taking a, a dip, um, the only problem with no limit coin is getting enough. You know, you just have to have the lures maintained. That's the biggest thing. More liquidity on the sell side to get bigger buy orders. Um, because if I, I mean, 33 mil, that's nothing. Like we're, we're still at the very brim. Um, if I'm talking about being hesitant 
to invest in bit shares because it's almost a billion um because i mean how realistic right if it hundred you know it's hard to get a 20 30x it's going to become you know top, i believe it could become a top 10 crypto bit shares but even if it became that we're not talking about the insane gains that something like a 25 33 50 million market cap you know if that thing was to get to a billion was to get to even higher um that's what the, the potential i look at of course it's not only the money i invest in things that i like i don't ever chase money i invest in things that i like i enjoy knowing my investments like the back of my hand and i don't care about everything else i'm not looking at all these other fucking gains people want to look at other things um, there's a lot of coins that i know are good that i didn't invest in that's fine letting the fish go right not having to catch every single thing um bit shares i finally clicked it took me a while i've always had a small position but it took me a while to actually align the dots to realize man this could be literally the perfect storm so looking over the notes um yeah i just like to sniper and find uh, severely undervalued gems right now and i'm very picky on my next gem on what i find if it's an under 100 million market cap coin i'm really doing my research i'm really really digging you can be you know i have the team you know on speed dial basically if i'm investing in a coin that's under 100 mil um, it's the, by far the greatest risk but the greatest reward and um, i would there, there's so many coins under 100 mil that i can that i can invest in i think that are going to go to parabolic that i don't because i don't quite understand it don't quite click with the team or i can't really you know it's, there's something right because that's that's when you when you chase money that's that's the funny the richest people don't chase money what you chase is running away from you right what you want to do is stand still and become more attractive so then it chases you mag you know it, the money chases you the money will revolve around you and how you do that is finding something that you enjoy and you understand like i think basic attention token is one of the most undervalued currencies there is i mean i think this thing absolutely has the potential to take over everything i mean and when it comes to ad space like integrating into facebook i think you can even do this on steam and if steam ever wanted to do any kind of form of ads you can get both rewards um, i think i don't know I, a lot of people don't see it and it's not the sexiest coin because it doesn't moon it, you know it's not going to moon like these others it's not going to go 20 30 x in one night it could facebook or somebody announces it but i've been holding basic attention tokens some of my investor friends you know they, they kind of poke fun at me they like, dan's always fucking with that basic attention token but i am and you're gonna see why in five years obviously it's my opinion um just my journey but i love i love the product i feel very comfortable with with basic attention token i feel comfortable with civic and not as comfortable but um i like those applications that i really understand eos the same way um so pay, patience is what wins for me you know i research prepare it's my superpower if you run out of money meaning you you bought the dip and you can buy no more the beautiful thing is you got research you can research and you can prepare because it's kind of a mind fuck if you always have money to spend then you're occupied by trying to spend that money and then your game gets weaker you actually have to have discipline to stop trading even if you have money to, pr to prepare for the future because luck is not everyone needs luck everyone needs luck right but the luckiest people are the ones who are most prepared for the opportunity that's ahead so if you don't have the money right now it's a really good idea to prepare learn how to find these coins learn to find a coin that like man i really like this one when i get my paycheck or when i do whatever you have to fucking do right like because you have to live it you can't be impatient you can't just say i want to fly on a lambo to the moon and not ever work again like you have to put in your dirt don't take this time for granted get every dollar you can right that's my mindset that's how i was doing i was eating tuna out of cans i was very very scrapping uh, you know, I was not wasteful with my money. I realized that this was a once in a life opportunity. And it doesn't matter what you start with. You have the billionaire mindset. Um, I just wrote a book, by the way. I didn't write. I wrote it uh, like two years ago almost. It's called Exclamation. Um, it's finally published. I'll have a link probably next video. Um, do a giveaway or whatever. But um, it's about health. But, you know, next book is going to be called Billionaire Mindset. But you don't have to have a billion dollars to lay the foundation to become a billionaire. And the mindset is of abundance. Always you're already there, right? So you want to be calm, cool, collect. It's not about, uh, when I wrote that book, I'm going to kill it here, but when I wrote that book, I couldn't write. You, you guys probably thinking, Dan wrote a fucking book, really? Dude can, can barely pronounce, you know, big words. Yeah, man, I mean, I have the tools. I use the tools. I have Google. I have Grammarly. I, I hired editors. You know, I didn't even have that much money. So I, it's funny. I, I'll, go, I'll get into how I got the editors, but I really, uh, I, you know, I poured, I poured my soul into that book and... I was just, you know, I was like 300 pounds. 
I was you know, never written a book, barely read any books. I always listened to them on the audio. I was desperately swinging though, because I was like, man, you know, I was, I, I was tired, right? I was in some of you guys position. I was tired. I was like, man, I want some fucking money. I'm tired of being fucking out. I'm tired of not having value. I'm just going to do whatever it takes. I'm going to do the impossible. I'm 300 pounds. I'm going to get 8% body fat. I'm going to write a book. I'm going to start making a YouTube channel. I'm going to start swinging. I'm going to start making connections. I'm going to be aggressive. I'm going to push forward. I'm not going to take what is. I'm not, it isn't what it is. You know, people will say it is what it is. It isn't. You know, you can, you can break through that shit. And that's what I did. Uh, I wrote a fucking book. I never written a book. How did I do that? I fucking did it, right? Um, you know, I lost over a hundred pounds in four months. I did, right? Never did that before. Fat, you know, fat it didn't work out for eight, ten years, right? And then I became like a workout guru. Found out about intermittent fasting. Found out how to tweak the hormones. I mastered. I prepared. I just took. You know, I didn't have anything. All I had was my body and my shoes. And I was like, how can I do something? And I was like, I'll sculpt this body. This is what I have to work with, and I'll fucking make it the best I can, right? So I became ripped because i didn't have a i played poker my whole life uh, for a long time i didn't have a resume i couldn't just go get a job i was already all in i was already um always update your your brave browser i'm gonna update that immediately um but i was always overweight when it came to that and ended up getting the eight percent body fat just swinging doing the aggressive that's what some people have to do you just have to get out of your comfort zone sometimes you just have to let it fly and say fuck this i'm just going for it i don't care i'm not going to sit here and watch other people take the leap and then i become too old to take the leap and then i just have regret and i hate seeing people take the leap and take chances and then i wish they just fall because i have this bitterness inside me you don't want to become that you want to take the leap and just keep on leaping and just keep on leaping uh, eventually something's going to stick. You're going to catch onto something and you're going to grab, um, you know, the, that's what I did. The book is in there. Um, yeah, I'm just going to probably go look at, look at some more gyms. Um, I love the research guys. I love being prepared. That's, that's when the luck hits, right? When, when you figure out how to do it. And how you do it is just brutal research. What people, what were you doing on Saturday night? I was listening to Stan Larrymore, chilling with my girl. You know, we watched a movie. And then, you know, when she passed out, I was, I was listening to Stan Larrymore uh, on a Saturday night on 2x speed because the dude talks slow. Guy's a genius, though. I listened to probably three hours of that. Um, you know, it, it's a sickening, it's a sickening grind. You really have to love it. Your priorities really have to be straight. Um, you know, just hodl. That's what I'm doing. I'm not really looking to sell when the market's taking a dip like this. Um, this is, this is why it's very important to be in projects that you believe in, because when there's dips and the market goes down, you have faith in your project and you're not just like, Oh, well, what the fuck is this thing just going to fall through the floor? Um, so I'm going to kill it there. Cheers. Peace.